Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Pastor Robin Mayer, and I have the honor and privilege of being the pastor of Orchard Church. We come together this morning to pay our final tribute and respect and love to William Frank Graw, who we all knew as Bill, who I will refer to as Bill. He was a beloved and faithful member of Orchard Church. I'm going to ask your participation in today's service by just lifting your voices when it's time to sing songs. The family picked four hymns that were meaningful to them and meaningful to Bill. Let us open the service with In the Garden. Ruth, known as Penny, Todd and a brother, Pete Abrams. 
Bill met and fell in love with his future and forever wife, Clarissa. Clarissa. We would call this Chris Simpson on the Wilson Liner. We'll talk about that. And they were married on Mother's Day in 1955 at the Kingswood United Methodist Church. They were the last couple to get married at that church. And they remained committed to each other until Chris passed away in 2021. Bill was a very hard-working provider for his family and he worked various jobs until settling into Hadley Museum and where he worked until his retirement in 1999. Bill loved his family, his friends, and the New Jersey Shore. He loved God and his church families and was active in his church for many years. And Bill spent his remaining years with his son Kenny and his wife Tammy, surrounded by friends and family. His wife Clarissa, his parents, and his siblings preceded Bill in death. And Bill is survived by his sons, um, William Graw, we know as Billy, okay, with his wife Sarah, Ken Graw with his wife Tammy, grandchildren, Brandon Baker, Ashley Williams, who is married to um, Jason, Ryan Hastings with his wife Teresa, Sean Hastings with his wife Riley, and great grandchildren, Marley, Marley, Marley? Marley. Marley Williams, Judah Williams, Chase Hastings, and Janelle Williams, and there is a whole bunch of nieces and nephews. So we begin the service by saying with something that we know in our Christian faith, which goes like this, dying, Christ destroyed our death, rising, Christ restored our life, and we know that Christ will come again in glory one day. And so we have gathered here to praise God, and this is a witness to our faith. And I ask God that in the midst of our grief, we acknowledge our human loss, and that we remember it, but we really celebrate Bill's life. So I call upon God this morning to grant us grace that those that are in pain and sadness that they might find comfort, and those in sorrow, hope, and in death we know through our faith in Jesus Christ there is resurrection. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave us birth. You are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. For you, Lord, know our needs before we even ask and our ignorance in asking. I ask you now to give us your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death, and help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in this life or in death will be able to separate us from the great love in Christ Jesus from our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading I chose actually is Psalm 23, and if you know it, feel free to say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy ride and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second hymn is actually the Old Rugged Cross.
easy feeling in return because we've dealt with the problem correctly by just giving it over to Him. We could give it over to Him about anything, no matter what our circumstances. We're able to handle whatever life brings. And even that is a departing of a person very close to us. The 23rd Psalm also says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. God is here. God doesn't say, well, I'll see you when you get on the other side. God says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take you with me. Right? You're not going alone. And the second thought of comfort that I find in Scripture is that he has prepared a place for us. Did you notice that in the Gospel of John, chapter 14? I go prepare a place for you. It says, the six days God created the heavens and earth, but just think, Jesus has been preparing a place for us for over 2,000 years. Man, what a place that must be. And the verse tells us, in Father's house, there are many rooms. A room for Bill and Chris, which I'm quite sure Chris has all decorated by now, okay? But isn't that a wonderful, comforting thought that God has already prepared a place for us? And the next thought of comfort that I find is that God, okay, he prepared a way for us to get to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, and some just really don't know the way on how to truly get there. But Jesus says, in John 14, I am the way, I am the truth, I am life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We are all travelers on a road called life. And there are many detours and many side streets. But we don't really need to be confused because it's very clear. We don't need to be lost. All we need to do is follow Jesus. He will show us the way. In fact, he is the way. He will lead us and he will guide us. And that, to me, is very comforting, and I hope it is to you, too. My very introduction to Bill was right here in this sanctuary. He was sitting in a wheelchair, and I went in the back, and I shook his hand, and I thought, wow, this guy's got some firm handshake. And he had a beautiful smile. He just had such a great smile, that smile. And when I sat with Tammy and Ken the other day, I really learned a lot more about Bill, and I want to share some of that with you this morning. Do you know Bill left school in sixth grade because he needed to take care of his family after his mom got sick? Sixth grade. Bill didn't drive until he was in his 50s. And as it was told to me, his friend Bill, happened to be a state trooper, okay, helped, okay, helped him get his license. Was it Bill? Dave. 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 Okay. But that wasn't until he was in his 50s. Bill had a sweet tooth. We all know that from the church. Okay, we know that. He also loved coffee. We know that too. All right. And he met his wife. Now they were on. They were on a dance. Where were they? What? Where? Where was that? It was on the Delaware River. Okay, but he saw her and he said, "Right for me, I'm going to marry that woman." And he did. And they were married 67 years. That's amazing. Right? And as I told you before, they were the last couple to get married at the Kingswood United Methodist Church in 1954. Now, Bill's health wasn't the greatest. He had three triple bypasses. That's a lot. When the doctor told him he needed to walk, you need to talk to Ken so he could tell you the walking story. It's worth it for him to tell you. Now, Ken and Tammy also told me that Bill used to drink a lot. And he wasn't the best when he was drinking. And one day he attended a retreat. And on that retreat, there was an altar call. Have you ever been somewhere where there's an altar call? Are you not sure you give your life to Christ that day? Well, that was the day that Bill Paul gave his life to Jesus and accepted Jesus into his heart and called Jesus as his Savior and Lord. And from that day on, he never drank again. And he got involved in the church. He went to Emmaus. He was part of the Promise Keepers. He got involved. Now, Bill didn't have an easy life. You learn more about what went on. But boy, was he an overcomer. 
The Bible actually says something about an overcomer, and the answer might actually surprise you because overcoming in God's eyes is not about achieving goals. It's about keeping your faith in Christ and persevering through trials. It's about staying true to God, even when it's not easy. He who overcomes the world through believing in Jesus as the Son of God will accordingly be dressed in white clothing, and I will never blot out his name from the book of life, and I will confess openly, acknowledge his name before my Father and before his angels, saying that he is one of mine. The book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 5. Bill had various jobs throughout his life, but there was one constant one. When he found something he loved, he stayed with it, and that was at the Hadley Museum where he worked as a mason helper. And then because of his health, he went on to be a custodian for light duty, which if you're a custodian, that's not light duty. But he worked there until his retirement in 1999. And though Bill may not be with us physically, he certainly has left a permanent part in each one of our hearts. Amen? Amen? So you all have stories of Bill and funny moments and difficult times, and I know everybody kind of gets scared talking in church. But if you want to say something, or you have a memory, or you have anything, you can stand right where you are. Or you can come up here. Does anybody want to share anything about Bill Block today? So when you go home, and God puts that story in your head, or just those funny things, the wonderful part about Facebook and social media is that we could then get in touch with the family and we could say those things. So share them. Because that's how we keep people alive who have passed on. We share the stories about them. And then they're always there. Let us sing just as I am.
before us, before we even realize anything about God. God calls us into a relationship. And I always say it's like this far off telephone call that's ringing and ringing and ringing. And then one day, okay, you actually hear the ring. And you walk over and you pick it up and you say hello. And that's the greatest part is that God is constantly calling us into this relationship. And maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But you can at any time because Bill did. He did. And he was waiting to get to heaven because heaven was a place where there was no more pain and no more sorrow. And we got to see all our loved ones again. And God called him home one day and came back and took him. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do that at any place, at any time, but you will also do it here. So as the next song plays, because he lives, and you want to take that step of faith, and that step of faith does not mean that you have it all together. It means that I don't have it all together, Lord, and I want you to help me put it all together. And all you have to do is come to the altar, and then I'll come over and walk and talk with you. And for those of us, let's sing our closing hymn, which is so fitting, Because He Lives.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the life of Bill. Today we celebrate all that he has given us and the legacy of his life on earth. Thank you for the roles that he fulfilled in his lifetime. Husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle and friend. We thank you for all, he, all the gifts that he used to build up the kingdom of God. Thank you for the ways that Bill has given to society. We think about what a kind friend Bill was to so many. May his faith, friendship, and of service be a lasting light to every single person he knew. Lord, we will always deeply treasure Bill in our hearts. And we give thanks for everything that he has given to each one of us. And may a part of him live within each one of us. Amen.